Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight we're coming to you this evening from Rio de Janeiro, which is a huge and beautiful and very complex city on the South American coast. We're going to be here all week. We're filming a documentary for our Tucker Carlson original series on the rise of Chinese power and influence in Brazil. Brazil is the largest economy in Latin America by far. It's one of the biggest in the world. And it is the most important ally of the United States in the Western Hemisphere. Brazil is a big deal. And yet the Biden administration seems determined to hand Brazil over to the sphere of influence of the Chinese Communist Party. Why is that exactly? We hope to find out. We'll also be sitting down for a rare interview with the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, soon. We'll bring that to you when we do. But first tonight, we'd like to begin with the loud and at times violent response to the end of Roe v. Wade that came down to the Supreme Court on Friday, as you know. If you've been following this, you may have noticed a profound change in the way the Democratic Party talks about the issue of abortion. Gone is the empathy or the room for compromise. So from the very beginning of this debate 50 years ago, even the staunchest pro-lifer acknowledged the anguish of young women who are pregnant and don't want to be, who are alone and feel trapped by the child growing inside them. And that is the reason that pro-life institutions have built crisis pregnancy centers. And to be fair, for generations, even the most committed pro-choicers acknowledge the inherent sadness of abortion, which at the very least is the end of a potential life. Quote, I do not view abortion as a choice, said Joe Biden, as recently as 2006. I think it's always a tragedy. And of course, it always is a tragedy, even if you believe it should be legal. And Democrats once said this out loud forthrightly. In fact, in 1997, as White House counsel, now Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan urged her boss, Bill Clinton, to sign a ban on partial birth abortions. Elena Kagan has always been pro-choice, but ending the life of a child a week before birth was too much even for her. And of course, for his part, Bill Clinton never spoke about abortion as anything but as a last resort. He famously described it as something that should be, quote, safe, legal, and rare. Our vision should be of an America where abortion is safe and legal, but rare. You don't hear that on the left anymore, ever. In fact, many on the left now behave as if abortion is itself a positive good, excited by the fact that a child who would have been born wasn't. Think about that for a moment, celebrating the failure of a child to come into the world. What does that say about how you feel about children or about people? In fact, some behave as if having an abortion is preferable to having children. How do we know this? Well, no one on the left encourages women to brag about having kids. Having more than a couple of children at most is, in fact, is considered weird and embarrassing, something that Mormons and people who live in the ghetto do. But abortion? That's something to tell your friends about. There's even a Shout Your Abortion campaign, highly well-funded, complete with perky T-shirts bragging about ending your pregnancy. What does that say? Nothing good. Over the weekend, you saw a lot of people proudly shouting about their abortions at pro-choice riots all over the country. Here's what Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles looked like. that. The hysteria is telling. It's not the assault on bodily autonomy of the end of Roe versus Wade. Those are the same people who demanded vaccine mandates. But this happened all over the country. In Arizona, thousands of enraged rioters tried to storm the state capitol. On Friday night, they tore down security fencing around the building. They pounded on the Senate's glass doors and windows while the legislature was in session. Police had to fire tear gas from the windows to protect the politicians inside. Here's what the state capital of Arizona looked like on Friday.
looks like insurrection to us, but no arrests were made at the Arizona State Capitol on Friday when that footage was shot. There will be no FBI investigation. Democrats who called January 6th the racist insurrection said nothing this weekend about the violent siege of the state capital of Arizona. Did you expect them to? No, of course not. And in fact, instead, they justified it. Let's be clear. We have uh, so many problems with the Supreme Court and the legitimacy. This court has lost legitimacy. They have burned whatever legitimacy they may still have had. This is a crisis of legitimacy. And that threatens the court's long-term legitimacy. The court is about to face one of the largest threats to perceived legitimacy ever in its history. The Supreme Court has lost legitimacy with the American people. The crisis of the very legitimacy of the United States Supreme Court fills me with sorrow. Well, you got to give them credit for all being on the same page as usual. We'd love to get the conference code to the morning call where they set that up. But because the court did something they don't like, they're not telling us the third branch of government is, quote, illegitimate. The Supreme Court is illegitimate because it's allowing voters to decide what they want to do with abortion. Some will call that democracy, a system in which citizens choose their own form of government. They're telling us it's illegitimate. On Sunday, the unelected governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, explained that without nine members of the Supreme Court dictating the law for hundreds of millions of Americans, women are fundamentally oppressed. Because we're going to get a flood of people. I have declared this as our safe harbor. This is where we have the Statue of Liberty welcoming people who are oppressed, women who cannot receive fundamental right to control their body or receive an abortion. They are oppressed. They're welcome here in the state of New York. So we could go on and on and play you absurd soundbite after absurd soundbite. But what are we seeing here? It's not simply an attack, an explicit attack on the legitimacy of the third branch of government, the court. It's not just an attack on the right of people to govern themselves. It's something bigger than that. What you're seeing is a coordinated attack on the family and on children. People at these protests are angered at the idea that children are being born. Watch what's happening there. That is hardly an overstatement. Here's a photograph on your screen from this weekend. It was taken outside the Supreme Court. It shows a mother humiliating her children in public, implying they, have bur they are a burden to her because they are still living. We saw things like this everywhere at pro-abortion protests, often in full view of children. This was the scene, for example, in Dallas this weekend. Watch. So what is that exactly? What about the thought of having children makes these people so angry? Where does an attitude like that come from? Well, as it turns out, that attitude comes from the same place the Democratic Party now gets all of its attitudes, directly from corporate America. Corporate America wants you childless. And this is a big change. A hundred years ago, big companies built housing for the families of their employees and then schools and libraries to educate them. It was the humane thing to do, but it also seemed to make good business sense at the time. If you wanted workers you could count on, you had to take care of them and their offspring. But over time, that arrangement got expensive. Employees with families demanded higher wages to support their children, and in many cases, they formed unions to get those raises. So labor costs soared. So corporate America, in response to this, developed a new model, hire single women. At many big companies, including in the traditionally male banking sector, young women now make up the majority of new employees. And you can see why they do. They work hard, they're reliable, they tend to be loyal to the companies they work for. The one downside to hiring young women is they can get pregnant. If you're running the HR department at Citibank, that is the last thing you want. Children make your health care plan more expensive. Worse than that, they tend to compete with an employee's attention. Responding to after-work emails seems less pressing to most new moms than putting their own kids to bed. That's a huge problem for big companies. So they have every incentive to prevent their workers from having children. They can't say that out loud, of course, it'd be too obvious. 
give us the best years of your life, and in exchange, we'll pay you what's effectively a subsistence wage in whatever overpriced urban hellscape we're based in, and then take from you the one thing that might give your existence meaning and joy in middle age, which is having children. That's the deal we're offering. That is the deal they're offering, but they can't say that. It would sound like what it is, which is exploitation. No better than what the cotton mills once did to 14-year-old girls. So instead of saying that, which is the truth, corporate America uses the language of the social movement it created, feminism, to spin the entire arrangement as some sort of progressive liberation movement. Fight the patriarchy, have an abortion. It's got nothing to do with lowering our labor costs, we promise. But of course it does have everything to do with lowering their labor costs. Across the country, they are making that case, abortion as liberation. Many of the biggest American companies are now paying female employees to have abortions, to end their pregnancies. That would include Microsoft and Apple, Facebook, Yelp, Netflix, Comcast, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, JP Morgan, Nike, Starbucks, et cetera, et cetera. Dick's Sporting Goods is offering female employees up to $4,000 if they get an abortion. Does the company offer the same amount to female employees who want to have children? Well, the editors at Breitbart wondered that. They asked Dick Sporting Goods that question, but the company didn't even respond. And that tells you the answer. What's amazing is that in the face of this, so many Americans who ought to know better have fallen for it. So some accountant at a soulless publicly traded corporation concludes that drones with no personal lives make cheaper workers. That's what happened. But rather than question this or resist it, your average college-educated NPR listener nods in vigorous bovine agreement and then becomes completely hysterical when someone suggests that maybe there's another way to live, that it's at least theoretically possible that raising your own children might be more rewarding as a life choice than commuting into a slum on public transportation in order to claw your way up to middle management at Deutsche Bank. But the very thought of that, of turning down Deutsche Bank to bring new life into the world, drives these people into a frenzy of rage. Choosing a family over service to global capitalism? That's disgusting. Shut up! Journalist Drew Hernandez ran into people like this over the weekend. Here's how it went. I guess the pandemic's over. What's wrong, sir? You like killing babies? You love killing babies? Yeah, I love killing babies.